slides into your DMs like, Hi, oh, hi, don't mind the curl tail. Hi. My name is Flick the Husky, and I have a flower on my head. Okay, it's because it's deflated. Okay, I don't know why. It's all floppy. I had it on my head before, and I was talking, and this was doing a lot of this. I'm gonna have to get a new one. Eh. So say hello to Fluke the Flower Boy. Ooh woo. <laughs> Today I want to kind of like chill and just talk. We're not doing anything crazy like making creme brulee or carving pumpkins. We're just gonna have some chill time because I think that's what we all need. It's been a pretty crazy year. Lots of ups and downs. And uh, I think the one thing that we all miss as furries are the furry conventions. Now I actually wrote up a little document and for a while I lost count of all the furry conventions that I've been to before. But now that I have it all written down, I haven't lost count anymore. I've been to 13 furry conventions since 2017. And I've had some good ones and I've had some bad ones, like really bad ones. <laughs> so I just wanted to share with you guys my best furry convention experience and my worst furry convention experience. <laughs> Because furry conventions aren't all happy-go-lucky. Sometimes you just have a bad time. <laughs> Sometimes you go into it ex expecting to have like a really good experience and then it ends up being terrible. <laughs> so maybe I'll just start with the bad news first. My worst furry convention experience. <laughs> so my worst furry convention experience was at MFF 2018. Now MFF 2018 was actually like my big break. That was where I like did a ton of shows and I met a lot of really cool people and it was just a good way that I could share my creativity. This was after like a couple years of like getting into dance competitions and finally like making my mark in the dancer community. So MFF 2018, people were like expecting me to get into the dance competition and they've seen me like dance in Floral Wars before. And I, I was even in a furry acapella group called Pacapella. MFF 2018 was like the end of the year and I had like practiced my dance routine, I had practiced the Floral Wars and I'd practiced Pacapella pieces and everything. I was like ready to put it all on the stage. <laughs> and that's what I did. Once I got to MFF 2018, I competed in the uh, dance competition, I competed in Floor Wars, and we got to semifinals, which is crazy. I got to perform with my friends at Pacapella, and we even shot a uh, music video for my furry dancing group, Ferocity. So there was just, there's a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> and all of that stuff was packed into like three days. So imagine, you're getting ready for a show. There's a certain amount of anxiety that you have before a show. It's a healthy anxiety. You know, that's how you have a lot of energy on stage, and that's what pushes you to be a good performer. However, when you have anxiety for three different very large shows, it just, I feel like it gets to be too much. <laughs> I was really happy to be able to perform for the dance comp, like that was my dream. But I felt like I was just a little bit too ambitious <laughs> to try to tackle everything at once. One of the biggest things that really got to me during, during that convention was the Pacapella performance and Floor Wars were happening at the same time. The end of the show of Pacapella overlapped with the start of Floor Wars. And I was with a team of two other competitors in Floor Wars. I was with Beta Monkey and uh, B-Boy Flitch. So the whole time during this Pacapella performance, I was like stressing myself out, knowing that I'm missing the start of Floor Wars. And thinking like, oh my God, my teammates are gonna be like, where the heck is Fluke? We're not gonna be able to compete because Fluke isn't here. But luckily, thank God, I finished my Pacapella performance. And I remember I had my first seat in a, in a box backstage I changed out really fast and I ran to main stage where Floor Wars was. Right when I got there, we were like next up to compete in Floor Wars. Ugh, just thinking about that day, like I, I, I don't want to put myself through that again. <laughs> so not only that, but uh, I also filmed a music video with my dance crew, Ferocity. Um, so just add that to the list of things that I had to do. And then the last thing that I had to do was a uh, photo shoot, which is an entirely different story in and of itself, okay. <laughs> But long story short, I got stood up for the photo shoot. We were supposed to meet at the main lobby, which is a terrible idea, by the way. <laughs> I show up in the main lobby in full fursuit, ready to film this photo shoot, and my photographer is nowhere to be found. Uh, and I'm like, oh, maybe I'm, maybe I'm just not looking hard enough. Like, So I'm like circling the lobby, trying to find him. It ends up being like 45 minutes later, and he comes to me and he's like, oh man, I'm sorry I missed the photo shoot. I actually have to go to a panel right now that I'm putting on. And I'm like, dude, what? And like, I had to cut practice short and like rehearsing short so I can make it to this photo shoot. So I was just very like mentally strained once I was walking back to my room after the, the failed photo shoot. Ugh, but um, <laughs> regardless, MFF 2018 was a huge convention and it was a lot of fun. Like if you were to go there just to hang out with your friends, 
that would be amazing. But I feel like it's just inside my bones. I really want to perform and I want to be able to show everyone my creativity. And that's why I signed up for all of these shows. So yeah, MFF 2018, it was just a very stressful convention. <laughs> There's a lot of people, there was a lot of walking, it was cold, and I just overstressed myself. I remember telling myself, I was like, one, <laughs> one, da 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 da. I'm not gonna go to MFF for a little bit. I'm just gonna take a little break from the crowds because that was a lot. And two, if I'm gonna perform in any like main stage shows, I'm just gonna limit it to like two shows <laughs> for a whole convention. That way I can at least have some time to chill out with my friends because that's ultimately what conventions are for. Transitioning to my favorite furry convention experience. My favorite furry convention experience was definitely Anthrocon 2019. It was also a very large convention, but it was my first time at this convention and I got to meet a lot of like my furry idols that I've been following for years now. And it's really cool because like once you meet these people you've been looking up to for such a long time, you just, you realize that they're normal people and they're very down to earth. AC 2019, I got to meet Strobes for the first time, which he's like my inspiration as a dancer. I got to meet Ronnie for the first time. He's like the maker of Floor Wars, Furry Floor Wars. And then I also met a lot of the YouTuber first. I got to meet Bajira, Mark Sparks, Nas Hyena, and perform in Barry Talks. I feel like AC 2019, because it came after MFF 2018, it was kind of like a step back from all of the craziness that, that happened the year prior. I really learned how to just relax and know how to take a break. I remember I tried out for the dance comp, but because my choreography was pretty slow, I actually didn't make it in. Um, which was, that was a pretty big bummer for me. But uh, I remember I told myself I was just gonna do the dance competition and not Floor Wars. So that convention, I didn't do the dance competition or Floor Wars. At first I was like really sad, but then I was like kind of relieved. Cause now I can just relax. <laughs> I don't have to stress about, oh, I can't drink all this alcohol before the dance comp because I don't want to be hungover for my performance. It was actually like pretty nice. So I got to actually just like go to the dance comp and just sit in the audience's seats and just watch and cheer for my friends. And I think the other really big thing that I valued about Anthrocon was I got to talk to uh, Ronnie and also Gail Frostbane. Gail is just an incredible organizer for a ton of different things across the furry fandom. And she's just a great friend. Like if you talk to her, she's just genuinely down to earth and she wants to know how you are. That was also the same convention that I participated in my first Berry Talks. And that was where I met all of these YouTuber furries. But yeah, that was where I met uh, Mark Sparks and we chatted for a while. And he's just such a funny personality. <laughs> I don't know, like, when, you, when you're in the presence of someone who is just genuinely very happy to be here and surrounded by all of his friends, it makes you happy as well. <laughs> so I know that I don't talk to Mark Sparks on a regular basis, but just from that one day that we hung out together, it was like historical, like, I'll just remember it, just because he's so funny. <laughs> So yeah, I think like the the only thing that happened at AC 2019 was Berry Talks. But other than that, I didn't participate in any dance competitions. I didn't like film any music video. Wait, did I film a music video? Did we? I can't remember. But yeah, AC 2019, it was just a very relaxed kind of a convention. I think that was where I kind of discovered the balance between performing and just relaxing with friends. And I think that's ultimately what I want in a convention. I just want to go there and be able to see my friends that I haven't been, been able to see throughout the entire year. I feel like at this point in my life, I value that more than being able to be up on stage and share that creativity. So yeah, best con experience, AC 2019, definitely. Worst con experience, MFF 2018, definitely. But I don't mean to knock MFF. MFF is an incredible convention with a ton of people and I definitely plan on coming back one day. Um, it was just the compound of bad experiences that stacked up on one another that I was just like, I'm gonna just take a break from it <laughs> for a little bit. But I feel like that's all that I should share for this video. To kind of just show you the reality that cons aren't all happy-go-lucky experiences. Sometimes you're just not gonna have a good time. But that also doesn't mean that if you have a bad time, you should just stop going to conventions. It really just depends on each convention that you go to. My home con is definitely Further Confusion. You'll definitely be seeing me going into that every single year. So if you ever wanna meet me, come to Further Confusion because I will be there. <laughs> it's in California, baby. But I hope you guys enjoyed me sharing my best and worst con experiences. And maybe you can relate to that as well. Maybe you can relate to the anxieties that I feel. <laughs> As a creative, man, all this convention talk is making me like really miss conventions now. <laughs> Was this a good time to talk about conventions? But yeah, I think that's all I have for you guys this week. 
Thank you for tuning in. If you liked the video, leave a little thumbs up. And of course, if you like the stuff that I do and want to see the future stuff that I post, hit the subscribe button. What have I been sitting on this whole time? <gasps> oh my god. What is... What is this? <gasps> oh... My goodness. Is this... Is this what I think it is? Is that... Is Curl Gang merch back? What? <gasps> That's right, everyone. Curl Gang merch is back. You asked, you shall receive. Now, I know that the last Curl Gang merch was limited edition. Okay, it is still limited edition. This is a different color hoodie. So for those of you who have the black hoodie or the white shirt, those will never go on sale again. However, these, these will be sold to everyone who wants one. So if you would like your own Curl Gang merch, go ahead and check out my merch page. Isn't this cool? Yeah. Now you can represent your fellow Curl Gang. Oh, also. Since I figure everyone needs one, I wanted to make Curl Gang masks. Check that out. Can you see it? Well, when it's over your face, you can see Curl Gang, okay? So if you would like your own Curl Gang mask, visit the store. I do want to say that these run a little bit small, so I'm just telling you now, it's going to be a little bit tight. <laughs> But it does the job, it's very comfortable, and it's very stylish. And it's also a great way to show that you're a part of the best gang out there. Girl gang. Oh! So thank you guys for watching. I hope you all are staying safe out there, and I hope you have a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.